Today's today is Sunday the 26th, making today's math. Wisdom equality, all being born to build, destroy. That's right. Move wisely, uh, deal inequality, and build on the positive and destroy the negative. Peace. Peace. Welcome back to the Not A Mean Godcast. I'm Lord Jamal. And I'm Digger Digger. And we back for another week. Another one. You looking beautiful, Queen. Thank you. I appreciate it. I like you look like you're going somewhere. Where you yeah, going? Yeah, I'm turning up. Shout out to uh my bestie Alex. It's her uh B Day. we were actually we were away. Okay. Um having our first official Godcast yes. hosting. We gig. were away. You were my, you we you are my road dog officially yes. now. That's right. Okay. Me and Digger. We are in San Diego. Okay. You thought it wasn't gonna happen, it's the first of many. Let's go. We're about to spend a weekend in Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda for life. We were in San Diego. Okay. At, at the Return of the God. Return of the God. Shout out to Herb Alchemist and all the beautiful people out there. Soleil, Soul Word. Flower. Um Lyric, shout out Lyric Jones came to check me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a good time. That but I a- but I miss my bestie's birthday, so we're celebrating tonight. So as y'all can see, I got ankles out, I got shoulders, okay, well, I got cleavage. Well, we actually <laughs> might bring her in here in a minute just yeah, to say, you know, just turn up real happy quick. birthday and sit in with us or She's whatever the there. case may be. Yeah, I, I heard her. So I feel like we learned a lot about each other, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um I feel like I learned that Ra Digger does not play when it comes to her fucking food. Nah. Okay. I don't. Um, mind. you actually put me up on. She put me up on uh, Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I don't think it was, you know, really out of caring about my nutritional, <laughs> you know. She wanted the five dollars that you get for recommending somebody. <laughs> he was, so he was about to download the app. I'm like, I wait, said, wait, I wait. Said, I said, she said, well, just get Uber Eats. I said, oh, oh, I don't have that. I'm gonna, I guess I need to download. She said, wait a minute, you ain't got it. <laughs> oh, 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 hang on. Oh, uh, uh, I can feel that. Uh, hang on. She, all of a sudden, <laughs> me, she, she, me. she typing off at here. Take this code. <laughs> I said, God damn. Okay. <laughs> She said, you got Deal Dollar? What's the other one? DoorDash. You got DoorDash? I said, no. Hang on. (laughs) I get $7 on this one. I said, God damn. You don't care about... And then when I'm ordering my shit, she's like making sure that it went through her fucking code. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like. I took it. So I, something, I was like, let me see your phone. Let me make sure you did it up. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something was messing up. And like, she was like, hang on. It went through my code, right? And I'm like, damn, she don't even like, what if it didn't go through your code? Like, at least I'd still be getting some sustenance here. But but you don't even care about my damn sustenance. You wanted your motherfucking $5 credit. I want credit my damn with your greedy credit. ass. My Uber Eat credit. And, uh, I'm t- and funny story, y'all. So we're at this event. Beautiful event. Mm. I mean, you, li- you were literally like you stepped off the boat in Wakanda. And uh, so... Unbeknownst to me, the entire event was uh, strictly uh, vegan <laughs> and vegetarian. So you know, we were supposed to be coming. Not a soy. We were supposed to be coming to this place to heal and cleanse <laughs> our bodies and mind. So I, I basically all but dropped the f bomb on them. Like, yo, there's no meat around here. Oh my Dang. god, vegan? What is that, Lauren? It's all plant-based foods. Lauren, all sides? Who do that, Lauren? You just not digest well, boo-boo. Oh my God, you just hurt my heart. No, take me to get some wings. I don't know what you're going to eat. You're going to eat some little bird food or whatever? The, everybody just Like, you can hear a pin drop. Wait, like, meat, meat. Tigger wants meat. Meat. It's, oh, tell like, tell them what happened when, real quick, tell them what happened when you <laughs> saw the, the, the what you thought was beef patties. Oh, so there's some there's patties all lined up. They piping hot. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Chicken patty. I'm, first thing to come to mind is chicken patty, beef patty, cocoa bread, some shit like that. Uh-uh. I'm like, um, I'm, I'm like, which one's the beef? Which one's the chicken? They like, no, sugar. This is plantain patty <laughs> and spinach patty. Mm. I was like, oh my god. I'm like, so there's no meat, no meat yeah, at all had straight on attitude. this premises, like. I mean, okay, forget red meat. 
chicken, fish, anything, any. Tigger had straight <laughs> attitude now. I'm a carnivore, like, like, okay. And did they started off on the wrong foot with that? Just let's. Yeah, I, I, I was definitely Aggie, so I did what any uh, what what any eighty five would do in a situation like that. And, she hit up that Uber Eats. and I hit Uber Eats and ordered me some other thing in food. And Bitch, I'm so happy. Bitch, you see that, bitch? I'm happy, bitch. There you go. That's that smile right there. That chicken made you do that. Just yeah. remember that. And she doubled up and all kind of shit on it. Like, I was like, yo, she really fucked with that Uber Eats shit. So I tried it out. It was cool. It was cool. You, you know, got you I, some I just, Mexican. Yeah, I got me some tacos. We was right on the I got edge. me some macaroni and cheese. We was right on the board. <laughs> well, uh, so yeah, that's what I found about you anything you discovered um, about me oh yeah trip? so uh, what i learned about jamar was jamar is just as ignorant <laughs> in real life as he is on this goddamn show so we're in line going through checkpoint and you know little little cute little munchkin uh <laughs> cute little white boy <laughs> he's got his little crocs he's with mommy and daddy his and, little and his pink crocs <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hold on. so he got his little pink crocs right <laughs> and he's got, he's got like, <laughs> wait so he's got his little uh backpack but oh, shit. it's a backpack that had wheels on it and he's pulling it <laughs> it's actually a, it's it's actually a, a a suitcase you can ride it's like a suitcase you can it's contoured ride. where the little motherfucker can sit on it if you want <laughs> <laughs> somebody could pull him his lazy ass and it's got in the airport it's got trunk and it's got the word <laughs> trunk <laughs> Wait, we being goofy. Okay. It's got the word trunk. I swear we're not super high either right Written now. on the side of it. No, <laughs> it, it was definitely was one of them you had to be there, but. So it says trunky, but like has, with an eye and shit. It has trunky on the side of it. <laughs> and he's he's basically holding up the line, you know. Because his, here's, let me, let me paint the picture okay, just a little bit. Okay. Okay. okay so it. this suitcase that he has, right, it has a long fucking tether <laughs> to it. And like a four foot leash to this motherfucking thing and so you're, when you're so going now around you got the, the kid you got the leash and then you got the trunk so this motherfucker's taking at least three people's worth of space in the fucking line and his liberal white parents don't give a fuck and they're he, just letting him do this shit and we're going around the thing and every time and, and he's not swift with moving and every time we go around little trunky <laughs> gets, like, gets caught up on the pole and he's holding up the line and his parents and his parents are you know they're trying to help him move it along he's like no I didn't do it like you know he's now keep it. in mind there's a, a, a cute little black kid ahead of him with a regular Jets fucking uh pull along that everybody yeah, else Batman. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah Batman okay I thought it was Jets okay he had a Batman, Batman. fucking suitcase some regular shit was moving along the line like, doing doo -doo. what he's supposed to do he here did. goes this little spoiled motherfucker right <laughs> So, so he just got on my nerves, but this is getting on the plane. So duly noted. And I got some fucking woman behind me, okay, <laughs> singing out of tune, talking about, I'm leaving on a jet plane. So I was like, what, what, what? We, we just if you don't shut the fuck, I just had a whole bunch of annoying white people around. So, so it was crazy. <laughs> he was just getting it from the front and the back. <laughs> and I'm just, mind you, I'm just cracking up the whole way. So now... We get off the plane and, you know, everybody's <laughs> falling out down the, you know, down the tarmac or whatever, off Here the goes plane. Trunk. <laughs> Here goes Trunky. Here goes Trunky holding up the line again. Why Jamar kicked Trunky? <laughs> on, Jamar man. kicks Trunky, everybody. <laughs> No, you didn't get a kid. You kicked Trunky. I kicked the little. Why you kicked Trunky? That kid was not Trunky off the rail just long enough to where I can get in front of this little fucker. 
and gang keep it moving. He kicked Trunky on the side. So now Trunky's not on the wheels anymore. Now it's extra hard to pull Trunky. Because now she feels bad. So now we like, can I pick the hang on? She's like, can I fix that for you? This little Trunky fuck, he don't give a fuck. He's just pulling it. And see, he's so far behind his parents because they're not even looking at him. This is what's so annoying about it. Now, mind you, now we back in, now we back in Newark Airport. Now we, you know, I just walked by the trunk. Now we surrounded by bye bye trunky. Now we surrounded by you know uh, more people of our likeness, and and now they're chiming in like, "Somebody come get that damn kid!" Like now you starting to hear the, the black folks chime in. All right. And wow, poor trunky. Well, listen. That, that was funny, y'all. So that being said, we have a super duper show today. We yeah, have we to did. fucking get to it because ah, uh, oh, it's power packed. Yeah, it is. Uh do we just tell everything in advance of who's here, and then we just bring them on and stuff like that? Nope. No. <laughs> nope. We just go one at a time. All right. Well, Jazz is gonna tune in on Wednesday and see who's here. Well, hang on. We not. We we still. You know. I was gonna maybe bring in. Yeah, bring in our first one. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, get right. that. Yeah, yeah, ten minutes. Come on, That's, yeah. So okay. listen, we are gonna have our first guest coming on. How many of y'all uh, checked out the four on? Oh wait, NBC? wait. Before we go, um, I mean, before we do that, um, mm-hmm. let me just shout out Freddie Sharky real quick for Freddy our beautiful, for our beautiful guest. Thank you for our beautiful, for our beautiful That's right. guest. That's right. Freddy came on, Sharky came, came all the way to San Diego to, to San see Diego us. to the show to support us. We appreciate you. Uh, y'all go check out Gypsy Posh by Tosh. Uh, that is her brand. And uh, yeah, we support people that support us here at the Godcast. And so, if you're in the tri state area this Thursday, the 23rd, make sure y'all come see your girl tear it down okay. at NJ Pack. Yes. Free concert, summer series going on all summer long. And I'm about to tear it the fuck. Down. I will be there. Yeah. Okay, okay so anyway, anyway, the four. Yeah. On channel four, right? Is yeah. it on NBC? Yes. It's on Fox? It's on Fox. Okay, channel five, then. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's with Diddy and Khaled and the, and the white lady. I forget her name. Who? who? Oh, Leah Remini? Oh. Huh? No, I'm talking about the other white lady on the show. There's a. Um, there's Fergie, and then, um... There's Fergie, and there's oh, another and, uh, white lady. Any other host, um... Oh, wow. And the other white lady. <laughs> That's who she'll be right now, too. Okay. Our resident fact checker is not here to find out who the other white lady is. <laughs> but really, it doesn't matter, because we have a contestant from... Uh, I want to say that's Megan Trainer. Megan Trainer, that's yeah. who it is. There you go. See, I don't be knowing... That's not a name I remember. That's, like, super white. Megan Trainer. Yeah, yeah that's I'm too white for my brain cells to hold on to. I have a niece named Megan. Thank you. Is she mixed? Half Puerto Rican. Okay. Well, check it out. We here. Yep. We have our special guests. We have a room full of people. I think this is the most people we've had in this room. (laughs) Um, But we got Jersey in the house right about this time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, You know what I mean? Godcast. It's my pleasure to welcome uh, a finalist, yes? Yes. On the show, The Four, Leah Janae, everybody. Clapping up. Leah Clapping up. Janae. Oh, What's up, guys? Recognize. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Glad Thanks to so have much. you. And mm-hmm. sitting to my left, uh huh. we got the legendary Uncle Vin. Uncle Vin. <laughs> Now, you know what? Virgo Nation in the building. Virgo Nation. I, before we start this interview, Sidebar. I must disclose that Lord Jamar and I have the same birthday, September 17th. Thank we are Virgo you. brothers. Oh, wow. That's right. There's quite a few of us going around. Doggy Fresh, September 17th. Rich Nice, September 17th. There's a lot of great people. And then just great people. You know, Michael Jackson was a Virgo, Beyonce, Nas, Lil Wayne. But we're not going to get onto this whole list of all the great Virgos What's in yeah, the world. Yeah. What's I'm just saying. Sis? I'm a cancer. You're cancer. Oh, well, you okay. know what? Okay. I have an artist that's a cancer. 
Sure. Cancers are, are dope. They just got to come out of their shell a little bit. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It takes but me once a little they bit. come out their shell, oh, yeah. they are Sometimes some talented people. Sometimes you want us to people. go back in. Oh, yeah? Way too much. Uh, See that? <laughs> See that? You almost got that little Michelle talking voice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, also shout out. I see you have your mother and father here with you. Of course, they're always here. Shout out, hey, hey, guys. hey mom. <laughs> peace, hey, y'all can say peace hey, on the dad. mic. What the science? Hi. <laughs> Yo, parents are. That's so where she get the Michelle voice from. <laughs> parents, I know, I know, dad ain't talking. Be, put the nah, bass nah, in the nah, family, nah, dad. Nah, we ain't talking like. There that. you go, peace dad. Peace to the Lord. Peace to Miss Digger Digger. Peace, peace God. God. Appreciate y'all. I see the ill town sluggers. I oh, see what you're doing. We in here. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> parents what? are so cool looking in 2018. I like the t-shirt. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like when I was younger, parents looked like some? school parents. teachers. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot the t-shirts in the room. They're right there. I go make. Them oh, okay. Happy. Well, we'll we get them later. But I, yeah, I know. For the, okay. Yeah. yeah I, listen, I'll be making y'all. sure I get my swag. I can't. Leave it to chance, and if That's I see right. some good swag, it's okay because them them t-shirts stay a little boring. We gonna make sure you. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, ill town sluggers. Are you from East Orange? <laughs> no, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I was about to say, oh, I thought you was Brick sure. City. Okay, Brick City, City all day. But you know, ill town reference. Okay. Okay. I'm about to say, now explain to me how a Brick City girl. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll explain, okay? Crossed over to the other wait, side. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. We haven't crossed. We just take casual trips back and forth to say what's up. <laughs> but we haven't moved it. Okay. Brick City. You're right? like me. <laughs> you see, I was sitting in on my artist interview and I started doing shit like that. Right. Let me ex- and they was like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Let him talk. This is his time and they're gonna have to learn. Hey, you wanna learn see, today. Lefty, that's, that's why I said I told him from the rep. I said, listen. No, but we want you here. I pop in yeah, and get out. No, of the we way. want you here, yeah. okay. but you can't let that dominant Virgo thing that we do <laughs> okay. happen right now. Just okay. let the, you know what I mean? Okay. Let you know what I mean? So, 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 you from Newark, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Now, when did you start singing and all that? Because you have a lovely voice. Thank you. Yes. I started singing um, when I was nine years old. I did my first professional show at summer camp at Newark Symphony Hall. I was nine years old. Now, you say professional, meaning you got paid for this? No, no. I didn't get paid, but it was a lot of people. It was my first time I was in the Cerebon. It felt professional. Very. Okay. Sarah Von <laughs> Hall. Um, and it was amazing. I sang I'll Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Um, and that, that's when like my parents saw, that's when I saw like, I just really want to do this. This is where I belong. Felt great. The lights and everything. They started making sure that I was everywhere. Every event in Newark has seen my face. You're right. If they haven't <laughs> seen my face, they're lying. Cause she has you on, on her phone right <laughs> now. Yeah. From an event, uh, what? Yeah. Last um, year it was or? the, um, it was the summer the, yep, back, to the su- back to school summer series. Yep. On now, the, were you, a oh, pardon, not to cut you off, but were you, um, like, trained, do you understand what I'm saying? Or did yeah. you just, like, did you take vocal lessons or you went to church? How did you really start singing and know that you can sing um, well? I was in a, a, a gospel slash gospel slash R&B group mm. called Special Ensemble. Okay. And we won the 2011 Gospel Fest. And you are how um, old at this time? I'm 18. No, at this at that time, time, that this happened. Sorry, I was... 11. I think I was 11 okay. to about 14. Okay. So we sang a lot of places. We met a lot of great people. Um, and just singing with them, learning how to blend with people, learning how to, you know, control my voice so I still stand out, but still, you know, sound good in a group. And that definitely helped me a lot. And then after that, um, my brother, he uh, was in Kinky Boots on the national tour. And I was away from music for about a year, almost nine months. And I was depressed, hated it. But mm. before that, I wasn't really taking music serious. You know, I was about 13, 14. I was just like, man, like, I want to do something else. But I didn't really want to do something else. I was just being seven. What did you think you wanted um, to do? Be normal. You know and what, what I did mean? The, what was that to you? Like, just you go to, to be school. a nurse or something? 
No, no. It's not even that I had other dreams. It's just the work aspect seemed like it was just like not even going nowhere, but it was just so difficult, you know. And at the same time, I didn't really know my place in life itself. So it's like, oh, like I'm trying to be an artist. That's weird. Um, it was overwhelming for a minute. Yeah. And I, I think that's the best word for it. I never used it. But I think that's probably what it is. Just like trying to see the vision for yourself, like without your parents, it gets hard. Like if you're not there with yourself. But when I was away, I started writing more. Um, my dad's a writer, so I started writing about 10. But I was really like um, formatting songs and doing it myself around 14 when I was away. Posting videos online, getting buzz, getting people to talk to me. Um, so when I came back home, I was ready. Like I was ready for war. I started um, getting um, uh, training. Yeah. That's when I started getting training. Um, his name is Boris Brief. He's a small Russian man. And he helps me tremendously. Um, I started opening up for people, Music So Child, um, you know, Can some I just great slide people. just a little bit yeah. this way because I don't want to block your face. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do that even on stage. Are we having a mic <laughs> here? Can I face? Um, but yeah, that's really when everything started happening. I was just doing shows, doing openings, just trying to get my buzz up still. But, um, you know, making bigger moves like getting background singers you know trying to illustrate an actual show mm -hmm. um you know just starting to be an actual artist um when i came back home kg um is eric in here eric um and and uncle vin they reached out to my dad because they used to work with him back in the day um i was I said before i was posting videos online trying to get myself out there they saw them they're like okay you're ready for work now. Mm. Um, so I started going in, trying different songs. You know, this was okay, that was okay. And then we did Perfectly Imperfect. I'm perfectly imperfect. This is who I am. I am what you see. I may be imperfect, but I'm perfectly imperfect me. And it was like, wow, this is awesome. Started promoting that, did a video. Um, then it was just this the talk of, you know, um, you know, we're going to start this uh, management label um, called um, Iltan Sluggis. And it was just like, okay, it's time to start making, you know, bigger moves, getting yourself together, styling, my caress, you know. And, and who's, who's Iltan Sluggis? Um, well, it's a lot of different artists. It convinced of... Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of artists. Convinced of me, um... Freshco, right? Um, Freshco, Angel, No Halo, yeah, couple yeah, yeah. dope, dope artists. Um, that's also coming just from everywhere. Different sounds, completely different. Okay. Um, yeah, and I we did a song together called On It. Um, not everyone rocked on it, but it's kind of like our group song. Okay. And um, just to hear all the different like flavors come together, I'm so excited to do something else with them. Um. But yeah, so then the four opportunity came up and you know, everyone was kinda just like, Well, you know, TV's tricky, but we're gonna we're gonna take a chance on you because, you know, just represent yourself the best and do what you know that you can do because it's like, you know, get on TV, you can do good, you can do bad and it's just like <laughs> you don't know, you know. Um, so I did the show, um, uh, after my first episode got mad buzz, like mm. super, a lot of people just like, who is this? When times were rough, I made sure I held you close to me. It's like, and it was crazy that happened out of nowhere because from when they first um posted the. They had posted the like the little advertisement first, mm -hmm. and people were just like, Okay, like we can't wait for next week, and then more people from out here started watching, so their ratings went up, yeah. and they were just like, yeah. "Whoa, like, what have you done?" Like in a good way. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't start watching until you came on. Oh, that's, that's right. Crazy. Listen, I, I, I think I tried to watch the first season of the four, and then you know, to me, those type of shows just for me, it's it's hard yeah. to stay engaged because. I was there from what American Idol, like yeah. right, right. When, when people actually watch those every week. Yeah. But 
The four seem cool. It's I a, like Diddy yeah. and all that. He's engaging. All right. It's a different But I, vibe. I, I honestly wasn't watching. So this is how it worked for me, right? I wasn't watching <laughs> until they started talking about you. I started hearing buzz even before they talked about bringing you on here. I heard buzz about a young girl from Newark, New Jersey mm -hmm. that's on the four. Okay, boom. I didn't even know you had anything to do with it, although I should have known because mm -hmm. you stay plugged into all Jersey, all of things course. Jersey. Um, so anyway, uh, so he puts me on. I, I, I watch the episode, and I'm like, wow, this girl can really sing. Like, you know, my immediate thing was like, you kind of reminded me of Fantasia, but like not that's your Fantasia, yeah. but just that kind of quality. Everyone, yeah. Just and that soul. That, yeah, that, yeah. A unique could, talent. Yeah, and you could tell mm -hmm. something special about you and your voice and all that. So I I, put, I have you on my Instagram, and you can hear me in the background. That girl can sing! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good look. So, 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 but this is how it worked for me. So, I watched the shit. You knocked the white boy off. The English white boy, right? Change. So now, so now... Um, I remember, okay, the finale is tonight, but I'm doing some other shit, blah, 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 blah. I come in, I said, all right, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to watch Homegirl win it all. When I come on, the white boy's back. <laughs> You're not there. And I'm like, what the hell happened here? <laughs> Where the sister a went? That was a lot. So what they have, the, they what have the blood clot this happened? This thing called the comeback episodes, where basically uh, pe people's favorites from the four can come back and they can, um, you know, come sit and, you know, sit back in the chair they lost, um, which is not real life. Oh. <laughs> right. Once you're knocked off, you're knocked you're off. Done. Right. You you're lose done. the battle, it's over. You're done. Just right. Like Remy. But that's um, okay. Right. So yeah, I actually was off right away. I kept my seat for the comeback episodes, mm -hmm. but James um, got his seat um, back from Jaranelle. So um, you know, it was us for a while. You know, the episode comes, and Sharia decided to battle Whitney, which was the other girl. And so it left me and James together, which was what people wanted to see, of course. It's like... The get back. Yeah, the get uh -huh. back. Mm. So, you know, I rocked. But mostly, like, when... Before I even got on stage, I was just like, you know what? We're going to put this whole performance, like, in God's hands. And let's see what he does. Like, I... Winning is never my first intention when I'm doing something for the first time. Just because I have to scope it out. And then I'm like... I got you. When I come back, <laughs> I got you. But you know what's so, so dope about that? Uh, Jennifer Hudson didn't win. Yeah, and, and, this is what I was gonna say know, before we be out. Win. Like, like mm -hmm. most of the people that win these things don't really blow up like that. It's the ones that don't win that go on to do the bigger and better things. Because and I feel like you you're your, probably you your gonna be one of those. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you. Really? Um, would you have been we gotta, locked into the... Oh, we, we, we yeah. need to go to the next segment. We're going to get ready to, but go ahead. Go okay, ask your question. Okay, just one question. Uh -huh. um, do, did they try... Do, did they offer to, like, lock you in? With, like, if you would have won, like, would you yeah, have been yeah. stuck? Yeah, so if I would have won, I would have got a... I think a... a, a I would have got signed to Republic, um, and I would have been named um, um, iHeart's Heart, uh, Artist of the Year. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was also in the contracts that, like, even though you didn't win, if we want to, like, maybe pick you up within the the 30, right. 90 days, yeah. Mm. yeah, then, like, we'll call you or whatever, and, and you can see what you want to do. But really, like, um, and I've been seeing this a lot lately, like, independent with strong management is the wave. Like, all that label stuff is, like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it gets really difficult. So I'm happy, like... And just the growing process um, with everybody has been amazing. Like, even just seeing the way that, um, like, I carry myself in interviews or, like, I can I have a vision of who I want to be, like, so that I can have longevity. You know what I mean? So the growing process with everyone is great. Like, I don't tell you guys all the time, but I love you. 
<laughs> you definitely, you definitely so seem dope. mature for your age. You seem like you, you're going to be able to handle this. You've got great people around you. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. you, you, we wish you nothing but the best. You know, I, I, I see good things for you, and just yes, you look like you've grown so much. You're probably I know, gonna, you're, you're going to be mad at my post. You got the glasses on. Wow! <laughs> <Just, laughs> yeah, I need my glasses. Yeah, she, I, she I just broke glasses. them. Glasses. Yeah, really but as soon I'm going to get some new ones. And Keep your head on back. straight, yeah. and don't let you know all the social media and whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to always there's trolls and all that nonsense. Yeah. And, no. Don't worry about that. Uh, speaking, of, speaking <laughs> of social media, where can people find you? I am on uh, Instagram at Leah Janae Official, L E A H J E N E A Official. Okay. And I'm on Twitter at Janae Leah. Vinny Vin, shout out uh, Ill Town Sluggers, and, and, and where can people hit you up and all that type yeah, of shit? Yeah, well, on um, Instagram at Ill Town Sluggers. Of course, I'm at Uncle Vim Rock on Instagram. Oh, mm-hmm. And we have the whole movement. KG, shout to KG. He's Woo! out in Indiana yeah. getting shout his daughter KG. In, uh, in school right now. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, I'm about to. I got to bring my daughter back down to school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So if if I have like three minutes, two minutes, a minute, I can explain to you guys okay. what, what, what this Ill yes. Town okay. Sluggers Go thing ahead. is. So. Go ahead. Ill Town Sluggers is a group created by KG and myself, okay? okay? So it is a record label and a management company. And just throughout our travels and all of our whatever, it came down to, you know what? We had a mascot, which is the bear. Mm-hmm. And uh, we didn't want to name it the Naughty Bear. So KG was like, yo, let's name it Slugger, like Louisville Slugger. I was like, whoa, we from Ill Town, let's... Name it L Town Sluggers. And everyone knows KG has been producing artists for years. Mm-hmm. He had the mm-hmm. Divine Mill labels. So he mm-hmm. put out Next, Jane, mm-hmm. Jaheim, mm-hmm. all of them. He was and now it. we just have a new reset with mm-hmm. L Town Sluggers. So it's the same thing. And you it's, guys are were the greatest right. with branding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So, so wait, are you straight R and B or we got No, no, it's everything, everything now. Okay. We have everything R&B, we have. R and B, Afro Punk. That's right. Dope, 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 dope. So dope. we have pop artists, we have R and B, we have uh Afro, mm-hmm. Big Shout the Fresh Go out yes. there in Atlanta, African artists. So it's 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 everything right now and because there are no rules in the game right now you know right. and of course naughty we still tour over 100 shows a year 10 20,000 people a night you know what i mean yeah. mm-hmm. and we're just hand carrying our new movement to our masses you know what mm-hmm. i mean That's and so. and we're just putting it in, man. And Leah Janae, she's been in the lab with Kay for a year before the four. So yeah. the difference is with Leah is now that she popped off on the four, she has incredible music in the kitty already. Ooh. So like you asked before, do, do the shows ready. try to hold them up? Yeah, there's a little mm-hmm. hold there, but we're breaking all of that up. We still have Flavor Unit, Queen Latifah and Shaquem on the background. And, you know, the likes of Jill Scott reaching out to a music soul I was going to ask that. I was gonna oh, say, my I was, God. Yo, it's I know, like, that, I know that was a secret. I was oh going to say, yeah, yeah. when's that Jill Scott collab She's happening? Amazing. Oh, my gosh. Please Leah, say it. Leah has an army of support. She has an army of veteran Generation. artists. Who... who the, <laughs> who, who know awesome. what's going on out here. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And as a matter of fact, a lot of these artists, such as ourselves, are independent. We know how to deal with the new labels, those new 360 deals that mm-hmm. you don't necessarily need. Right. But you can go to the table and use these businesses. You can use these corporations for the services that they provide. Right. Yeah. Well, I definitely feel that you're, once again, in great hands. Thank you. You got great people. Uh you know, I definitely vouch for these brothers right here. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So, listen, continued success. Uh, to stay focused and keep doing what you do. I definitely. just, I want to see more. You got I'm anything excited. new coming out, or you got um, something out there right now we can check out? Or well, yep, I actually have an EP out right now that um, I actually completely wrote myself, and it was. Um, produced by a couple of different uh, producers out from Newark um, called Life Water or Life with the Real, Leah Janae. Um, it is on everything, everywhere that good music is sold. It's R&B, hip-hop. It's all genres on there, pop. Um, and it's just basically um, just a complicated 
wait, it's complicated. Yeah, complication. Compilation. I was going to say complication. Compilations <laughs> of <laughs> songs, um, just describing situations that I've gone through through like a third eye, basically. Mm. Um, like how I felt spiritually or just like, just when I was in my bag, I just let it go. Oh, no. um, right, you're right, just right, a right. baby. What uh-huh. you have been doing? Oh my God, high school's but a you beast. Were, you were 16, 17 high years old yeah. when that stuff was created. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, listen, I wish we could talk all day, but we got to... Uh, we got to get to our next segment, but we definitely thank you for coming thank down. You. Come on back. Yeah. Uh, Always. Hopefully the next time you back here, you're like a platinum artist and, Ooh, you, and you don't front on us and shit. And you, and, <laughs> of course right, not. Right, right, right. And you remember. I'm like, uh-uh, remember you when you had your glasses cast. on that stage? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so the thing won't let me. So, yeah, yeah, Come yeah. Come on, yeah. Jay. Jay and Digger, y'all know, we all come from the same yeah. hood, That's the right. hood of the music industry. Right. Right, right. So right. we know there is no fronting from no. where we come okay. from. Never. So no matter how far she goes, no matter where we're taking her and we all go together, this is the home right here, man. Definitely. So Definitely. we always revert back to the bricks. They know how we do they with know. Jersey. Okay. So <laughs> you know how we That's do with Jersey. Right. So okay. yeah, home is home. Dorothy, click those little <laughs> Sharonsky <laughs> heels, baby. Well, sh- yeah. uh, on that note, we're going to be back right after this. Peace. It's the absence of all confusion. United we stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks, available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today. Peace. Welcome back to the Not A Mean Godcast, Lord Jamal. Digga, digga. Ha ha, we got our special guest in the house right about this time. Yep. Oh, I've been waiting for my brother to come on (laughs) up here. A lot of people thought he might not make his way up here. They're thinking, oh, you always be up on DJ Vlad. I bet you he ain't never going to come up on your show. Well, God damn it, the time has come. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Anatomy Godcast, my man, DJ Vlad. What, what? What's, What's up, good, D Lad? What's up? What's yeah. up? What's up? Now, for many people, first of all, yes, make sure the mic is just on this side of you. This there side, there right we there. go. All right, here we go. Because for many people, right. this is their first time seeing <laughs> your fucking face. Right. Usually you are a disembodied voice on the mic. Right. Great to have you, my brother. Hey, man, come on. It's Lord Jamar. What's you know? popping? <laughs> come on, man. And now... It's an, get... honor to, it's an honor to be here right now. Hey, it is. Well, it's okay. an honor to have you, man. This dude right here, I mean... Listen, he helped. You know what I mean? He, he the first one that put me on to some internet talking shit. You know, because I know how to talk. But little did we know that, you know, it would resonate with people. You know what I mean? And I guess he was the first one that saw that. And, you know, brought me back and and continues to bring me back. And do you know there are actually people that say, I like you better on Vlad, Lord Jamar. You know, you're more raw and unfiltered on Vlad. See, uh, they think I'm I'm the industry playing here to make a a kinder, gentler you. I don't know why, because... (laughs) I'm making you soft. (laughs) Listen, I don't know what that's about. I'm I'm making you care about people's feelings. But They don't like me. Trust me, (laughs) you know, it's always raw and unfiltered um so anyway uh you got the vlad tv one i guess the biggest probably right now the biggest hip-hop blog site yes i mean we're one of them you're one of them right we're we're one of them you world star yeah stuff like that we each kind of have our own uh you know like different platforms that we're bigger on so like i'm bigger on the YouTube side in terms of like original content right. and interviews, they're bigger on 
like the, the Instagram side and the, kind of the website side. And, right. You know, I mean, Hot New Hip Hop sort of has their own niche in terms of new music and, and so forth. And everyone kind of, everyone who's still here, because a lot of people are gone right now, a lot of companies are gone now. But everyone that's still here is doing his thing in its own way. So how long have you been doing this shit? And how did you get into this? Like, what made, you know, DJ Vlad say, I want to start putting videos up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that can be a thing. Well, it was <laughs> 10 years ago. I think, I think this month. Okay. I think August of 2008. I was doing street DVDs. You know, like Smack was probably the most popular right. in that genre, but we had Hot in Here DVD, okay. you know, which had its its own following, and we interviewed a lot of people. And uh, I was I would just grab a, a camera and interview people, go on you know, uh, go on music video sets and just wait my turn, or go on media days, or use my connects, go to studios and everything. And I was doing that, but people weren't buying DVDs anymore. Right. So so I was struggling. You know, I was working trying to work harder every month to make the same amount of money from last mm -hmm. month and uh, youtube was around but it, it wasn't monetized it was just some free shit that people used kind of you know google had bought them and they was just kind of seeing what was going on but when they introduced the business side of youtube i instantly saw the vision of where it's going to go and how big it's going to be it's like oh you could take these videos and put them on bigger sites and you know share it with people and move it around i'm like this is going to be the next big thing this is going to be bigger than television so i just stopped everything else that i was doing i stopped djing i stopped making mixtapes i stopped making dvds i stopped making documentaries which i was you know doing at the time and i said i'm just going to do this 100 percent. okay anything well i'm curious to know how you two started uh you know s developed a relationship and and <sighs> It was from Kanye. Yeah, you you going on Twitter talking about Kanye's skirt, right? How would you feel when when Kanye uh, rocked the skirt? Not good. Yeah, I mean it's like that's not hip hop to me. You understand what I'm saying that that really has no place in hip hop, and the only reason why. An individual would do something like that is purely out of ego, arrogance, and lack of knowledge of themselves. That's I went on, started. yeah. Well, I went on Instagram actually, and I guess Twitter. Uh, oh, was it Instagram? Yeah, yeah I right. went on Instagram and Twitter, and made a statement basically about you know how they're trying to feminize the black man, and, and I showed an example of a guy wearing a skirt and a blazer at the same time. And I was basically said, we have Kanye to thank for this, okay? Mm -hmm. So somebody had contacted me, like one of those, uh, you know, some sort of blog or whatever, but they do written blogs or whatever. And he said, do you wanna do an interview about that post? And I was like, all right, like I don't give a fuck. Like ain't nobody scared of Kanye, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so we did the interview, it did all right, I don't know if you saw that interview. I, I think guess, I may have. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's probably what it was. Have. And because it, it went around a little bit, but it wasn't as big as like some Vlad shit. So then he hits me up and he's like, do you want to go on camera and talk about this? And I was like, fuck it. And, and it's funny because I, oh, I was just, I had not too far in front of that discovered like Vlad TV and like was watching the videos and I just liked the format and just, you know what I mean? It looked like some cool shit. So then for him to call me, I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I go on there. I fucks with this. Um, and then when I went on there and did that one, the shit just got real crazy. What the shit did, like 750,000 yeah. views or some crazy shit. Yeah, it did numbers. Yeah, just from just talking regular Lord J shit. You know what I mean? Okay. So then it was like, Hey, you want to come back? Sure, why not? <laughs> now I inadvertently say that white people are the guests in the house of hip hop. Right. And now that fucking, and that wasn't even supposed to be the topic of what are we even talking about. Yeah. That was just some shit I said in the middle in, of in speaking. In the midst of something else. And it became a, a catchphrase. That became a thing. And now 
this shit just got crazy. There's an interesting backstory about the the white people and our guests in the house of hip hop is that before I ever interviewed Jamar, uh, I had done an interview years before where they asked me about white people's role in hip hop. And I said, I consider myself a guest in the house of hip hop. Oh, wow. That interview got unearthed and it never came out. Someone said, remember I showed it to you? Yeah, she Remember, did. Remember, I'm yep, like, yep, yo, yep. look at this. This came out years before you said it. I'm and like, we was wow. just, yeah, because I, I felt the same way. I said, I felt lucky that I could be doing hip hop as a job. Well, okay. that now, now that you say that, like, how did you even get into hip hop? Shout out. Thank you, Freddie Sharkey. Mm -hmm. How did you even get into hip hop? First of all, what's your background? Uh, I was born in what used to be Russia. Mm used to be the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. It's now the Ukraine, right. Kiev. Uh, I moved, me and my family moved to the US when I was about five years old. Okay. Uh, lived in Massachusetts and settled in the Bay Area. Okay. And uh, when when hip hop started to go national, like with break dancing and stuff like that, I, I just fell in love with it. I started break dancing. How did you get ex exposed to it? There was like some TV shit. I remember the New York City Breakers Mm -hmm. were, were a thing. <laughs> right. I remember seeing that. And then you started slowly seeing videos like Malcolm McLaren, Buffalo Gals. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, and the message started And now out. Malcolm McLaren, you know, uh, Buffalo Gals and all that. He's with the world famous Supreme team. And that's the gods right there. Okay. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a white guy fucking with the gods early. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you're like the new Malcolm McLaren right now. Okay. Fucking uh, with the gods. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. I, I, and, you know, Keith Haring did the artwork right, of that, right. uh, I know. that I'm coming. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and I just started, you know, like the, these songs weren't being played on the radio. So I started collecting vinyl. I started just saving all my, you know, paper route money and then going to Warehouse Records and buying a vinyl, hoping that it's going to be dope. Right. Oh, that's what it used to be back in the just day. Just hoping that it was going to be dope. Yep. And that's how I discovered the message. And, uh, you know, like the Johnson crew and, you know, a lot of like the West Coast electro stuff, like Egyptian Lover. So and, you're buying these records. Yeah. Little white Russian kid yeah. in the Bay. Yeah. And, and breakdancing. Like, and, and, oh, I, and you I were had, actively breakdancing. And I had a little crew. That spinning I on with. your head and your back and all that. Spinning on my was head. Was you my nice back. or you so so? Tell the <laughs> Did truth. The crap. You know, you know what it was? I, I want to see the footage. I never, <laughs> I never felt I was that nice because I couldn't windmill. Right. I, I could never get the windmill. And that's why I ultimately quit. Because I, felt I could never fully get the windmill. Yeah, either. did you see Jadakus do it recently? I, I did. I could do I too. Did. He's nice. I couldn't nice. get past. Two. I couldn't get past. I, the second I couldn't. One. I couldn't windmill. So I kind of said, "Well, you know, this is like the, yeah, you can't be a real breaker. Can't without be a real break dancer without windmilling." So that's kind of where I where I stopped. Okay, were you popping and shit? Yeah, all that, <laughs> all that. <laughs> okay, so you're collecting records, mm -hmm. and this now, you, now you fuck around and get so many records that you say I might as well be a DJ. Is that what happens? No, nah, that, that's that's not what happened at all, actually. And and, and like, what kind of like? <sighs> You see what I'm saying? Were you hanging around like a lot of black kids or like, you understand? Not, there weren't really a lot of, a lot of black kids in my area. I grew up in San Mateo. So were you odd? Had, were you the odd guy? I was kind of the odd guy. But you know, you got to understand at the time, I'm the only Russian kid in this whole area. My name is Vlad and Russia is like the devil at this point. All right, Vlad the Impaler. Well, no, like Russia itself, like like <laughs> there there was talk of a nuclear war during this time. I was, oh, right, I was right. really like hated, you know. Well, remember they used to have movies like Reds and all that. Yeah, type Reds, of shit. <laughs> Red Dawn, uh, yeah. Red Dawn. Yeah. You know, the, the, the day after, like the you know shit like Russia that. was really if the he ops. dies, he dies. <laughs> That's you were the cold hearted fucking <laughs> right Red Curtain, and. uh I had like a little little crew of kids. Like it was like one black kid, one kind of like Spanish kid, me. We had a little breakdance crew. And you know, that kind of went. Y'all are the international you know? breakers? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> right. I think my name was Fresh Rock. That was my name. Okay. Fresh Rock. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got into the, the breaking shit. And then once I stopped breaking, I just kept listening to hip hop. And I, you know, as when Easy E and NWA hit was really when I started to really like, really, really love it. Okay, so now you know what? What, I mean? what makes you feel like you could start putting out DVD? What makes you feel like you could start making money? So through so, hip hop. So I go to uh, 
Yeah, let's get to it. Let's do it. So, so I, I go to UC Berkeley, right? And then the, there's a there's a hip hop scene out there. Like where I was living in San Mateo, there was none. But Berkeley, Oakland was a scene. Hieroglyphics mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. getting signed mm-hmm. and putting out records that we were all loving. And I just started like producing a little bit. I got a little beat machine, you know, because I'd played some instruments and in, and in, you know junior high saxophone really? and clarinet and okay. you, know, you know a little bit of guitar and you know a little bit of piano and stuff like that. So I started making beats, and uh, I just started going real heavy at it. Like I, I kept making beats and kept making beats and kept making beats. And then one day I realized it wasn't going to be Dr. Dre I or, or DJ <laughs> Premier. I realized it just wasn't that. I didn't have that best in the world thing. And I moved into this new house and, you know, I had these DJ friends of mine, DJ, and uh, they left, they left their equipment and I'd been making beats for so long. I jumped on the turntables and it just came natural. Wait, can we rewind mm. for a second? Cause this is, you just said some shit that like, like white people will say real casually, but like, we need to know how you get there. Yeah. How do you moved into a new house? How'd you do that? <laughs> at the time you know how <laughs> casual motherfuckers just be yeah. like oh i moved into a new house for a lot of people that's a big step how'd you move into a new house it, it was it was an apartment it was, it was an apartment at the time how what were you doing to make money at the time well at uc berkeley i was a computer science major right there and you have was, it and, and as the world <laughs> as the world wide web was forming i was sort of in the, the epicenter of all that so i as i was so going to bubble school, i was in the bubble mm-hmm. like I st- while I was still in school, I started working for Intel and Sun Microsystems and Autodesk, mm. like the 3D companies. And it was like, I graduated and the dot-com thing was going crazy, right? And I, motherfuckers was paying me six digits out of high school, out of, out of college. So I, I was making money. Nice, okay. I was making money, then I launched my own company, like my own like like recruiting company. And I was making hand, money hand over fist, and it was coming crazy. I, I got a big apartment, and I got the 500 SL drop top, and you know how I got the big office. Oh, and, wow. And, and this is like some that. shit I wanted to talk to you about, yeah. too, but I'm going to wait till the next set because because I need yeah. you to stay with us. Okay. Because I want I know you're up, up on this whole financial uh, kick, and yeah. you got Vlad stocks. Yeah. I want to talk to you about all that, but I oh. want you to remember mm. what the fuck you said you did. When you first got some fucking money. But we're going to get back to that. We're okay. going to get back to that. Yeah, because I got a point to prove. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, Digger, you got anything you want to ask the gentleman? Um, I want to put you in the hot seat. Okay. Little warm seat. Mm-hmm. Little warm seat. Let's do it. Um, Let's do it. So I have a slight issue with your platform as a whole. Okay. I feel like it perpetuates a lot of the nonsense that we are trying to put a halt to in hip hop. And and I and I'll and I I'll say this respectfully. I've been invited up to Vlad mm-hmm. twice right. in my entire career. You didn't come. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 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 I'm I'm oh, let me let me break it down. The, the two times that I've been invited to Vlad in my career, the first time was after I, I, I made a diss track towards Tyler, the creator. Okay. I did come for that. I came for that. Okay. I, I didn't do the interview, though, did I? No, you didn't, you didn't do the interview. Okay, yeah. I did speak on that. Okay. Yeah. I, that's why I forgot. My bad. Yeah, no, you, that's you cool. Did, you did come. My bad. And, but the second time I was invited was after a, a little, you know, thing went viral, some comments I made about... Iggy Azalea, mm, okay. and and that that I declined that because I just felt like at the time I you know I said what I said when I said it, I didn't need to repeat it, but my issue with that was I I I consider myself you know for the most part a positive artist like I'm not really out here shit starting like I in, in the midst of all my hardcore digger digger I feel like as Dirty Harry I've always attempted to preach the gospel and 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 really show females uh, another way to do this without you know selling themselves sexually how come i've never been invited up just to talk about that i think you have been we, i don't know Vlad. i believe i believe once you started doing the thing with jamar i think we reached out i'm serious you didn't get that 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> let me go back through my scrolls. I'll go back, I'll go back through the scrolls. But now, what, but see, I just started this with Jamar this mm-hmm. year. I've been in the game since mm, I got my first deal. I mean, even before, you know, officially signing in 96. Like, why not just invite me up to talk about how, how you know female struggles in the in the in, in the industry or you know how how do you survive how do you balance motherhood with right. with with hip hop like why are those type of topics like not clickbaitable <laughs> do I do I want to keep it 100 100% keep, keep it on it we you know a lot of my job is to look at the the numbers and the statistics mm-hmm. right we're a, we're like a tech company as much as we are a content company and we are 90% male we have a, it's not like a 60 40 it's like a 90% male audience and historically when we had females on the show they didn't do numbers okay so if you look at Vlad TV as a whole and you look and you scroll down all the people we've interviewed there there have been some females like you know Roxanne Chantel No you've def- you've definitely yeah. had females but-, but but if you look at it it's like literally like five, maybe 5% female guests that's not because I don't like females or I don't like talking to females it's just that we have to cater to our audience and our audience is 90% male and they want to hear other males talk So aside from okay so let's so let's put aside And to me that's kind of what hip hop is 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 about Okay, so let's put it. Let's put aside. <laughs> let's let's put aside male and female stuff. Now, what happens when you have two artists that are beefing? We know they're beefing, mm-hmm. and you're going back and forth between these two artists, getting them to, you know, getting them to just kind of gush. Does like is there any part of you that feels like you know what? Maybe, you know, maybe I need to fall back from from this topic or maybe maybe i need to fall back from this situation like does at some point does um you know does the moral kick in like you know what this this could i know this going to go sideways real quick let me just shut this whole thing down does that happen we, we shut down a lot of stuff like for example when we interviewed no plug about the bankroll fresh murder uh and that's and that's what I, I didn't want to say it, but that's that's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, the the killing, you know, of, of Bankroll Fresh in that situation. A whole bunch of other people want to speak on it afterwards ourselves, but we okay. felt like if we continue to put people on, it's going to escalate the situation, and we felt that his story was accurate based on the police reports okay. and how he turned himself in. You know, okay. a person's not just going to kill somebody and go do an interview about it if they if they were guilty. Right. And ultimately, a year and a half later, Atlanta PD released the video footage and it actually shows Bankroll Fresh yep. shoot, I'm, no, shooting, I'm, I'm shooting at the car. But if we started interviewing the other side and his uncle and the cousin and everything else like that, it was like, this, that, is, this, is, this is going to keep escalating. That's the actually the situation I was referring to. I was a little, I, I, yeah. I get why, you know, you let him speak. I was a little uncomfortable press and play but i mean i press play it was it was uncomfortable because he didn't show remorse about the situation he was laying next to a pile of money and he he was smiling sometimes and it was, it was an uncomfortable interview um but it was the truth ultimately what what came out to be the truth afterwards and, and our job is to report on things that are uncomfortable sometimes and that, that was one of those situations okay but well, you, you you did say okay we we not gonna we're, we're done do everything. yeah we're not doing any okay. if you look there was no more interviews okay from the no plug incident and trust me and people were upset like his uncle wrote this big long letter about how much he hates me and how he's gonna finish me off and it was all because we did not agree to do an interview didn't didn't with, let with, let the uncle and the cousin and everything else do the interview because I'm like let's just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, I I saw that situation going downhill real fast, and I was just curious, right. like, did somebody step in or was okay? We, Listen, we, we made the decision to to stop it at that point. Okay. We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna come back with more DJ Vlad. You know what I mean, Godcast. Peace. Peace. It's the absence of all confusion. Neither we stand, divided we fall. 
two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodgee.com. Get yours today. Peace. Welcome back to the Not A Mean God cast. Lord Jamal. Digga digga. With our special guest in the house right about this time from Vlad TV, we got your man DJ Vlad himself. What's good, Vlad? What's up, man? Uh-huh. What's, what's the last time you actually did an on-camera interview? I think it's been like five years. Oh, wow. I think I did Sway. Sway in the Morning was probably my last interview. That was probably like five years ago. Something like okay. that. Now that beard is looking biblical. I feel special. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that beard is looking biblical. Like, yeah. You could actually like smuggle some shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you looking you looking real Russian right now, right? Like he would just fuck somebody up with an elbow. Knock back some vodka. <laughs> Zangief. Zangief from Street Fighter. Word. So uh yeah, so we here talking with Vlad and um Dig is asking the tough questions. Well, shit, we all going to ask the tough questions. Uh, Listen, this is my man, but he knows. See, this is why I fuck with him and he fucks with me because we keeps it real. I keeps it a hundred. Like we've had times, especially in the beginning where he might like name one of the interviews, like one of the interviews, the title will be some shit that I might not agree with. I'm like, that was one line. And why would you name it that? And like. And I'm hitting him, and, but he he's, yo, he's a real motherfucker. That's all I can say, like, and that's why I fuck with him. Like, and right I on. sat across from him, and we've had discussions about culture vulture and mm-hmm. white man the devil and all, and we and this is still my boy, okay? Yeah. So right. it is what it is. But the people are not going to allow us to let you sit here <laughs> without addressing without addressing that. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, Lord Jamar, you being soft on your boy. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Here we go. We got some people that call you DJ Vulture. Right. Okay. Um, the term culture vulture has been made popularized by the homie Dame Dash. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a discussion about what we feel the definition is, and you know what I mean? There might be degrees to it. What do you feel, DJ Vlad, about being called of culture vulture? Do you think it is a fair uh, moniker? And, you know. Do you think it's applicable to you? Right. Uh, well, I think from a from a certain standpoint, a person would consider me a culture vulture. You know, I'm a white Russian kid that that makes money in a black art form. So under that that definition in and of itself, that would make me a culture vulture. Other people might say, well, he's from the culture, and you know, and he gives back. He has people like Jamar, and he has, you know, what I'm saying like like different, you know, figures that uplift the culture. So my son, my son, you know, even big U from the rolling sixties, you know, one of our really big interviews talked about how he came from this life and now he has lowered the gang violence in LA, helped to lower it to a time from when there wasn't any gangs. You know what I mean? He has a, a program where he goes and diffuses situations, you know, from all the different neighborhoods around LA. So I, I try to definitely give back. So from that definition, someone might say, well, no, he's not. It's a, you know, you put yourself out there and people are going to are gonna comment on it. I accept it. I know. I mean, how, does it make you feel a kind of way or? Like, God damn it, wanna... I was break dancing since I was 10 years old. Fuck you mean? It, it don't make me feel no type of way. I mean, when you, I, I could be Vlad the programmer right now and no one would have an opinion about me. I could live my life without being called a culture vulture or the police or the feds or or whatever, get death threats in my DMs and you know, all that all that type of stuff. But I chose to put myself out there. So I would never cry or complain. Right, because someone... you named it Vlad yeah, TV. You could have yeah. named it anything. Yeah. Like like all three of us chose to put ourselves in the public eye. No one put a gun to our head. We all chose to give up a, a piece of our private lives and, and ex, you know, expose that to the public 
So we have to come, we have to accept all the bad stuff that comes with it. You know what I mean? You can't just take right. the money and the and the fame and the shows and you know the respect and oh yo you changed my life and yo I love when you did this and that yo you know that first brand new being album like it touched me oh yo when you did that that one song you know with Buster like yo I I loved it like you can't just have that without yo she's whack he's whack you know the bars are trash you know you trying to be this or that like it all it all comes with it and that, that's how I look at it honestly okay well let's just move on to money okay okay because this is something that you talk about a lot yeah and i see that you have a a passion you've started this vlad stocks instagram page and you're uh -huh. you're trying to basically steer people towards investing in in the stock market and and just being more physically responsible and thinking about you know economics and shit like that in investing period investing period yeah in within a culture and within people that don't traditionally see this as something viable and all that and i get that i think that's cool that's noble um but i want you to now remember the story right when you were talking about when you were a computer programmer uh -huh. and you moved into your apartment and when you first got some money right yeah. What did you do? You got a Benz. Yeah. You <laughs> fuck money off. Okay, like. Yeah. Now imagine, because this is the dilemma that a lot of black people have. Right. And let me just note that, you know, I didn't finish that part of the story, but I lost all that. Right. I, w I went broke and had to sleep on couches because I, I didn't even have a place to sleep. Cool. But I'm just telling you what you did. Yeah. As soon as you got some money at, from going broke yeah. to getting money, and then you went broke again. Okay, but now. Well, I, st I started broke and I got some money. Right. Yeah, yeah, I you know said I mean? that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you started yeah. broke. Got some you money. got some money and then you went broke, then again. went broke again. Right. But so now look at the part from when you were broke to getting money. Now, yeah. this is what happens a lot of times. And see, some of the advice that you give, right, with this stock stuff. Mm hmm. It's almost like asking the people that are going from broke to have to to having money to not do what you did, like to not indulge. It takes a certain type of discipline. Uh -huh. And I'm saying we got to find it somewhere if you really want to be successful. But the, do you understand the type of discipline that it takes to go from having no money and to getting money, but saying, you know what? I'm not gonna spend it. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not gonna show people that I'm not poor anymore. Right. I'm not gonna go through that healing process, what it feels like, because we spoke about this before and how Rock was, you know, Rock Marcy calls it healing. Um, I'm not gonna go through this healing process. It's almost like, okay, imagine this, right? Imagine being at the strip club, right? And all the girls in the strip club is only messing with the guys that are making it rain. Right. You have enough money to make it rain. Yeah. But you need to be physically responsible. Yet you want some strippers fucking with you at the same time. Mm -hmm. What do you do? And your dick is hard. Let's keep it real. Do the Al Bundy trick. Tie the, tie the, tie the string to, tie the the to your Benji. Put a doll over there. <laughs> Next. Or like 50 Cent. Just, Last just dance take all it. night. Be like 50 and just take it all back. You know what I mean? After you throw uh, it. Yeah. Give me that. Uh, that was just play money, girl. You didn't right. think you was keeping that. Right. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like, like, hundred percent. That's a a big dilemma for people. Yeah. So you had made this saying at some point, you know, people might come up on t ten G's. Even though I don't still don't agree with everybody, but some people just might. You see, what I'm saying, and for ten G's, you can get a new hairline. 
Huh? <laughs> I, I learned from 10 G's. You can get a new hairline. You can get a new hairline. Hit up Safari or Tiger, yeah. <laughs> Listen, is that how that works? That's hey, works. I don't know. I, I don't know. Word, word on social media is for 10 G's, G's you, you can get, get a, a new hairline. hairline. And this is male or female? I can't confirm or deny the allegations. This is male or female hairline? <laughs> probably, probably means hair, right? It I, shouldn't I, matter. I, I heard it's running rampant in the male community. Really? Yeah. Mm. Well, hey, shit! For less than ten G's, you can get a whole new. You get a whole new hair. <laughs> Women yeah. can get a whole new hair. <laughs> well, so yeah, so 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 what I'm saying is, it's 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 definitely hard for a lot of people to go from, you know what I mean, nothing to something, yeah. and then to the point where they can actually, you know, ha have excess money to save and all of that. Like, this is where the mind frame, like. If you broke and then you get some money, if you don't have the mind frame like you're still broke, you're gonna be fucked up. Right. Because you think that it's always gonna keep coming. But but you gotta you gotta always remember that you did this and you still do shit. Like like, let's keep it real. You got you drive a nice car, mm -hmm. you own a fucking Rolex, you live in a nice fucking home. Mm -hmm. What if I told you that the, the key to all of this, don't don't drive that car you're driving. Uh, Vlad, you need to drive a Toyota with not leather seats either. Right. Material, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Okay? Regular schmegula car. Regular schmegula watch. No phone posits. None of that shit that Vlad likes. And all these sneaker right. collections and shit. Like, what do you do? When I was broke, that's exactly what I had. I had a, like a 1980-something like Nissan bullshit. You know, because you had in, to, you yeah, had no choice. I had no choice. So what I'm saying is, once you get that bread, yeah. it's hard to not spend it. Correct. How many people have the discipline to not spend the bread? Most don't. That? Most don't. I I did it. This is why a lot of times some of this advice doesn't work in the real world. But I think, because I'm trying to tell you to take shit like this into account, that the average person right. almost has to have the discipline. Of a fucking Jesus up there. You know, you know what I think happens though? Like definitely when you're younger and you've never had the money before, yes. you're gonna go through that. Like I think when I got my first record deal signing bonus, I went to the Timberland outlet. <laughs> I, like I don't know what other female rappers did. But I, I needed every pair of Tim's in every color. I got every color construction Tim. Known to mankind, so New York, right? This <laughs> <laughs> is such a New York moment, right? Here. You thought you was the shit. I was the Trust shit. Me. I had olive green. I mean, I had I had perforated construction. This is used to be my but, shit. Yeah, to go up in a spot and just get shit in every color. Get every color. I went to Reading, Pennsylvania and bought 30 pair construction Tim. Wow. And and I, I literally I know I went I went through my uh signing bonus earlier. I, and I told the story before about how like I realized I was broke when I tried to buy myself a beveling iron and, and my car <laughs> declined and I was like, Oh shit. Wait, isn't that something for your hair? Yeah, 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 <laughs> and yeah. And I ain't it, that much, right? Right, right. So I'm like, oh shit, how do I tell Q tip I blew through all this money? So <laughs> I had this whole speech prepared about how I was gonna ask for more money. Uh. And um before I could get to it, he hit me up and was like, Hey, I'm gonna um I decided to give you a, a, a monthly living stipend and, and he's like, How much you need? Uh how much do you think you need to survive a month 2500 i'm like it, 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 yeah yeah okay well tomorrow's friday get there before one because they're probably going to be leaving the office early and i yeah. hung up the phone i'm like thank you god and from that moment i literally like have been such a a, a like frugal almost frugal person i've mm -hmm. never purchased a jacob chain like i've never like there's just Stuff that I, I mean, I went crazy with shoes and pocketbooks, but like the diamonds and the, like crazy cars, like I, that was like the dudes in my family. But I, I got one. I bought a Land Rover <laughs> with the. I think matter of fact, I got a. Uh, I got um uh, some money from a verse from Master Ace, and I bought myself a Land Rover. <laughs> I remember it like, and that was like the one car I drove like for a while. Mm. But I say all that to say. I think you get it, you lose it, 
and when you get it back, it's like, all right, now I know what to do. Right. If you get it when you're older, you'll you'll probably yeah, figure you out. I think better. it's yeah, it's the young mentality. And I think I was even more disciplined because I had a baby. Like I got my huh, I got okay. my advance and I had my kid the same all in the same week. So mm, I didn't really huh. get a chance to go out and trick off. Like right. I, I had to look for a babysitter to go right, trick right, off. Right, right, so right. I was pretty much at home with the baby. So that kind of helped curtail my spending a little bit but definitely um i think i don't think that's something that's ever gonna stop like i think yeah. if you're young and especially these kids nowadays what they sign in with, with little uh what's his name um pump got the like the, a 12 million dollar deal like all these little guys right. now like they're getting like multi 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 million dollar deals how do you tell them you should get a prius you should like right. so so yeah so you, Vlad, it, right. and, and tell us guys. okay why and how you got so passionate about this stock shit and yeah, like, yeah. you know get into it well yeah when i was making money originally when you start making money, you start thinking you're gonna keep making that amount forever. Yes, you especially like, in this business. Right? Like, oh, you think I, them I got, shows ain't never gonna stop? Yeah, I got it. I'm gonna maintain it. It's gonna keep coming. You start spending it before you get it. You start expanding. You do that. You know, you don't know you like certain shit until you start doing it, and then you get used to it. You know, you get used to a certain. Type I never of knew I liked linguine with gold yeah. flakes on it right. until uh, so you, you don't know, want to go back it. to the regular linguine yeah, afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Don't taste the don't same taste, without the gold it don't, flakes. It don't taste the same. And and I had it, and, and I wasted so much of it, and I went broke to the point where I couldn't even pay my taxes. Mm. Like, mm. I spent a year, you know, that was when I said, okay, I'm going to become a DJ. That's going to be, this is really my passion. And I could either go back and get a regular programming job and pay my taxes or not pay my taxes and use that money to to work on my craft and pursue my passion. And so you did some black shit and not pay your taxes and worked on her craft. Shout out to fucking Vlad for that shit. All I right. My taxes. It, it took me 10 years to get back to the level I was at when I went broke. A decade of just grinding. like. And this is as a white man in America. As, as a kid in New York that's from the Bay that has no connections, that wants to become a mixtape DJ and has a backpack full of mix CDs, leaving them with the Africans on consignment and coming back and, you know, you don't have your slip, so they're not going to pay you. Mm. And, you know, the stress of, of grinding out through hip hop, which is something I've always loved, but here I am trying to actually do it. And it took me 10 years to get back to where I was. And I, I feel like I was really one of the lucky ones because I think most people, once they lose it, they never get back to that point mm. again. It, it never comes back so around. So now once you got back, you said, you know what? I'm not going to fuck this up again. Well, and that's what you, got you, you to you stop realize, shit. You realize in retrospect. What's important. That, well, that you never, I never had to go broke. If I had been, if I understood money back then, I could have set up a situation where I could have had my money. I could have put money aside and had it grow where I always had a certain level. You know what I'm saying? Like like people invest money and, and they, they let that amount grow and and it gets to the point where, you know, with compound interest, they have a base. Mm -hmm. I had no base. A, a $150 phone bill fucked my whole life up one day, you know, because I went over my minutes. Like I didn't know how I was going to pay it. Like I was really at the edge and, and making bad decisions because when, when, you're, when you're in a corner you're making short-term decisions to get by. And, and I learned so much from that time that once I got reestablished and more money started coming and I started really to study money and understand how just keeping cash, you, you technically lose it every year because of inflation. Compound interest is so important. Investing in stocks as opposed to real estate is, is a better choice for most people and stuff like that. I wish I had known that back then. I could have never, I could have been in a situation where I never went completely broke. And that's kind of the message that I try to give to people. I wish I had known. I wish there was a flat stocks page that I followed when I first started making money. But my parents never really had money. Mm. None of my friends had any money. I, I had no direction. I was just balling out, fucking with girls, like fucking with fake friends, you know, that would help me spend my money. And I wish I had something like that. So I tried to vote 
this type of financial education. I don't I don't really make nothing off it. I don't sell, you mm -hmm. know, I don't sell a package. I don't have people invest in me or whatever. I just put it out there and I tell people I'm not a financial advisor. This is what worked for me. If y'all want to fuck with it, cool. If not, no, nah, I think it's a really good page, man. You got you you got a lot of common sense shit on there, a lot of good quotes and shit like that. And I'll look at them. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I see what y'all like. That's yeah. that's really the page to fuck with. Right. Actually, that Vlad Stocks page. That's a really good page. Like, cause it ain't about if y'all got a problem with the bullshit. Let's just say of a regular Vlad TV where mm -hmm. you know. First of all, I'm glad the fucking Slim Jesus shit stopped in its fucking tracks. <laughs> that's done. See, that's some shit that people was blaming you for and acting like, sure. oh, he don't give a fuck about the culture because he's bringing people like Slim Jesus to the fucking game. He stopped um, himself. He's like, need, hey, I'm not about this life. And yeah. you need to get the hip hop finger wagged at you for that one because that was some fucking bullshit right there, Vlad. You did that? Yeah, he did that. <laughs> yeah, I, I helped that. He helped hope that, that motherfucking happen. shit. But guess yeah. what? That motherfucker gone dead in the water and we ain't gonna hear from that motherfucker no more <laughs> um that being said the vlad stock shit is actually good shit. something positive like you see what okay. i'm saying like sometimes i think people just like to bitch for bitching sake like you know what i mean like there's always positive and negative in all things i know like, somebody you know like I mean? that sometimes <laughs> uh Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's positive and negative. <laughs> I know somebody that. <laughs> would you try to be contrary for contrary sake? Who the uh, fuck bitches you know? for, for bitching sake sometimes? <laughs> Who in the? I don't know what the fuck she talking about, Vlad. But anyway, mm. um, yeah, something like Vlad stocks. I feel like is is some positive shit, man. Like something that people actually can take you know some sort of education away from you see and, and 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 like people need to build on the shit that they know like you know what i mean and, and that's how you add on to the cipher you see what i'm saying so it's not like you got some five percent knowledge you could add on and all that but guess what what do you know about i know about stocks so here's how i'm gonna add on and, and let y'all motherfuckers you know this is my equality by giving knowledge and bringing this to the cipher and letting people you know what I mean? Sharing it. Like, and that's some cool shit right there. Like, you don't have to do it. That's super You know dope, what I mean? Man. Because a lot of people are fucking greedy. A lot of people get money and they get greedy and they want to keep the secret of wow. how to the secret of how to get rich. And I don't want you to know because you might take money from me. And key word to push in, key key thing to I think factor to put keeping the culture moving forward is to share the plug man any anytime they ask me hey Ra, you got any advice for new artists share the see, plug people don't understand the law of abundance you see what i'm saying like like even when i started like okay my shit got hot right i start my own shit i could have just been like oh i'm gonna keep this all to lord you ball no i seen rod dig up one day i said you know it would be a perfect Fucking, he seen me on Twitter bitching for bitching <laughs> sake yes. one day, and I said, That seems like my, my female bitching partner right there. <laughs> right there, she will be fucking perfect person to bitch with me. <laughs> and that was just the power of the mind, though, and not being a selfish type of motherfucker, you know what I mean. And when this shit pops off and all that, we gonna fucking share in this together, mm -hmm. and it is what it is and it's the law of abundance and i'm not the, i'm not a fucking selfish you know it's mine mine it's all mine you ever, you ever remember that uh it was the bugs bunny it's yours it's yours Daffy it's Duck. Mine. It's no mine. it was the no there was an episode and like the nigga had like a genie and shit he was in a cave with all this fucking gold or some shit but then the nigga bugs bunny happened upon it and, and Daffy Duck was mad. And he, it's yeah. mine. It's mine. It's all mine. Like, you know, he <laughs> tried to keep all the money, but he ended up getting fucked in the end. Oh, no, you don't. You want my treasure. Well, it's fine. I understand. All oh, mine. Consequences is small consequences. As long as I'm rich. <laughs> He got shrunk and then he was yeah, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, in the pearl, right? Because he was like tiny. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. That's some shit right there. Yeah. Um, don't be Daffy Duck. 
talking about it's mine, mine. You know what I mean? Remember the law of abundance, y'all. Pull out one blade of grass, two blades grow back. Okay, so don't worry about people taking shit from you and all of that. Strength the universe, in numbers. The universe shall provide. Mm. Uh, with that being said, man, was it painless? Yeah. <laughs> totally you had painless. to think for a second. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you lived, you still got your beard. Uh, it's, yeah. It's not on fire. I mean, hey, well, listen, I'm, I'm down to, to discuss whatever. Yeah. You know, because how many people do we do I talk to and have them expose parts of their lives and stuff like that? I think it's fair right. for it to go both ways. That's what's up. Well, maybe one day we'll bring you back and we'll just talk current events like we do. Yeah. But only I'm asking you. Yeah. I got topics for you. What sure. do you think about little shit face and little <laughs> 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 little face tat and all these other motherfucking MCs. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man. MC little fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Yo, Vlad, I appreciate you coming down, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Vlad so is the I. homie, man. I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, y'all could be mad at him, but listen, we asked the hard hitting questions, and it is what it is. Um, still gonna continue to do Vlad TV interviews. Because mm -hmm. once I started doing this, people was like, oh, now I don't have to watch him on Vlad anymore. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm still gonna do Vlad interviews. Right. Like, the, the numbers, it's not like the numbers dropped off or nothing. Yeah, we still doing yeah. what we do. And this, you know, this helps supplement it. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. You can just get more Lord Jamal. <laughs> right, I told you, they, they love you on Vlad. See, they, they don't have me over here playing devil's advocate. <laughs> Well, they hate me playing devil's advocate. Well, it's okay. Yeah, sometimes I'm gonna do it. That. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sometimes do it. Sometimes you need that. <laughs> it's all good. But yes, thank you for coming down, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, another great show, Queen. Absolutely. Thanks, Vlad. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be scouring my bookings looking for my invite the next time I drop some. I don't know when I'm dropping some new music. Please. I'm always doing cameos and stuff on other people's mm -hmm. shit, but I'd be lying if I say, yeah, new new mixtape coming next month. Like, no. It's... I'm going to make you do something. I know. We're going to do something. And my little sister be beating me in the head like, sis, you probably like the only one from your generation that still got it. That, 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 that really right. That, <laughs> I'm gonna, like, stop that. <laughs> But I see you about to hit the pavement with uh, oh, yeah. Sexy Alex. Oh, yeah. I uh, got once my hot again, pink. Happy birthday to Sexy Alex. Um, and yeah, you know, another one in the can. Yeah, baby. Well, shit. For everybody here, my man, the other Alex. We call him <laughs> Sexy Alex. So we don't need him. Uh, Harold. You call him the engineer sexy, bro? Grim, Jamal, now Cypher. <laughs> now Cypher. <laughs> Uh yeah, everybody here at the United Mean God cast. I'm Lord Jamal. And I'm Digga Digga. Peace. Why do we fall? Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today.